So Ursula van der Leer decides to give 18 billion euro of European money to Ukraine. Don't forget the EU is already skinned after giving 60 to 80 billion euro to Pfizer. Investigation ongoing there. And then the same van der Leer decides to give 18 billion euro of European money to the fascist country of Ukraine. And not one word, not one word about peace talks. Just back the war. Back the war because it fills her and her friends' pockets. Um, as you know, we had agreed to have 9 billion of macrofinancial assistance to Ukraine, which will be partially uh, dispersed to the end of the year. Overall, so far, the European Union, the European level have uh, supported Ukraine since the beginning of the year with, uh, with by now 19 billion euros. But the focus was in the discussion more now of the, on uh, the year to come. It is very important for Ukraine to have a predictable and stable flow of income. Uh, so the important thing is to have a predictable and stable flow of income. So that money can be spent on arms and of course the war continues. How about a predictable and stable flow of peace, van der Leer? Hmm? Do you not think that would be a good idea? Um, and therefore we, um, we assume and uh, we, we, uh, Ukraine is telling us that they need approximately 3 to 4 billion euros per month um, to, have for the, to have enough resources for the basics. And these 3 to 4 billion um, euros should be um, financed by the European Union, by our American friends and by the financial institutions. Therefore, the discussion was about round about one. So simple maths, okay? There is around 300 plus million people in Europe, okay? So if we're giving them 34 billion, that's 100 euro per head, right? How about that? All these wars are the same. You just have to look at the billions that went from Iraq, pumping the money from under the border, Syria into Kurdistan, um, stealing money from Libya, and now, now, pumping money into Ukraine so they can take that money back out. It's all bollocks, people. It's all bollocks. Just look at some of the Guardian headlines, and you can look this up. Some of the headlines before the crisis and some after the crisis. So before the crisis, welcome to Ukraine, the most corrupt nation in Europe. After the crisis, they write, the fight for Ukraine is a fight for liberal ideas. Before the crisis, another headline, Ukraine's neo-Nazi party. After the, uh, the crisis, for foreign fighters of Ukraine, um, they offer purpose, cam cam camaraderie, and cause. And of course, this one. Before the crisis, Ukrainian president uh, Rub has become increasingly corrupt and authoritarian. After the crisis, Zelensky, the TV president, turned hero. Are you not angry yet that you have to support this pile of fucking shit? I am. I am at the moment on what's called the job seekers benefit, which in short is basically a temporary payment um, that comes out of the taxes that I paid in this country, which have been thousands upon thousands throughout the years in this country. And I'm personally really glad that my hard-earned 100 euro is being returned to me and my daughter and is not supporting this pile of crap. Of course, I know that I pay taxes in many other ways every single day, but I'm still glad that some of it is being returned to me rather than supporting this war. I'm now speaking as a EU national. As a Russian national, it really hurts me to see the damage caused by EU and America to my native country and to Ukraine. Because if you have not yet realised, Ukraine is no longer a sovereign country. It is now completely and utterly governed by the United States, which is using it as a battling ground against Russia. If you're not worried about yourself or your future, Worry about your children's future, the future of your grandkids and their kids, because I know I'm worried. Anyway, that's my rant over for today. Don't forget to join me on Telegram or the other side.